Framework just announced something huge. Risk V is coming to the consumer world and a few other things. Let's talk about it. Now I'm gonna divide this video up into chapters. If there's something you really wanna to skip to, you can find it down there. This is my Framework 13. It's a laptop that I absolutely love. If you don't know what Framework is, well, they're a company that makes, you guessed it, computers. Tear them down, replace ports. Let's say you don't want this plug here, you want it here, that's fine, you can swap it out. You can put in an ethernet jack, whatever you wanna do. You can buy all the parts in this computer and they're easy to replace. If you go in here and open it up with just these five screws, everything is labeled, there's QR codes, and the whole computer works off one screwdriver. Now what that means is that when you wanna upgrade this computer, you can just buy a new main board with a processor, keep your old RAM, all your old plugs, the old chassis, all that stuff. Just upgrade components as you need them. In fact, I have a screen coming for this computer computer later this year that has a 120 hertz refresh rate instead of 60 hertz. It's really cool. And one of those upgrades you can get is a main board now from Deep Computing. By the way, quick plug, if you want to support the channel, there are some Floatplane exclusive videos linked in the video description. A recent one on there is one of my friends was helping build a media server so I can just be my own Spotify at home. All right, back to the video. Here's the specs quoted straight from the framework blog. The Deep Computing RISC-V mainboard uses a JH7110 processor from Star5, which has four U74 RISC-V cores from Sci5. Sci5 is the company that developed CPU cores for the RISC-V ISA. Star5 is the processor designer that integrated those CPU cores with other peripherals. Deep Computing created a mainboard, leveraging that processor and framework makes the laptops that use the mainboard. That's a mouthful. The power of an open ecosystem. Now, there are some downsides to this. I'm gonna get into those and also what this means because that could just mean nothing to you. The downside, this has all soldered on components, RAM, micro SD card, EMMC storage, which you think about it, it sounds like that's kind of against what framework normally does, but this isn't your normal framework. According to framework, these are limitations of the processor, but this is meant to be more of a dev kit or a playground than it is meant to be like a consumer flagship run of a product. And I'm sure if you know what RISC-V is, you're thinking, okay, so what operating system is this gonna run? Well, according to Framework, Deep Computing is also working closely with the teams at Canonical and Red Hat to ensure Linux support is solid through Ubuntu and Fedora. Me personally, I'm a, I'm a Fedora person. So what is RISC-V? Well, RISC-V is related to processors, but it's not a processor, it's not a chip, it's an instruction set. In fact, the risk part is reduced instruction set. Now, why would you want a reduced instruction set and why not just use the existing setups? What are the benefits here? Well, risk five is completely open source. It's an open source instruction set that basically anybody can use. If you wanted, you could technically go out of your way and build a processor with a risk five instruction set. It would be expensive and time consuming, but you could do it but it would be a lot cheaper than the alternatives. This is a lot easier for developers and manufacturers, a lot cheaper for developers and manufacturers too. Because it's open source, you don't have to deal with mountains of red tape and paperwork and patents and all that garbage. It also means you can focus on application specific performance. Like if you're doing uh, machine learning or video editing, you can kind of dive more into customizing your processor for those tasks to make it better and more efficient. Here's a quote from the framework blog. RISC-V cores can be developed for anything from tiny control CPU embedded in a sensor, like the fingerprint sensor on my laptop right here, that they've had in framework laptops since 2021, that uses a RISC-V core, to monstrous multi-hundred core server processors. So it's fully customizable, kind of like an FPGA, but think way bigger scale, way more capability. And instead of the actual chip, it's the instruction sets, the things that make x86 and ARM what they are. But a big limiting performance of a lot of processors these days, it's not just gigahertz, it's not just cores, it's actually instruction set prediction. You see, your computers are doing so much all the time. There's so many instruction sets and things they have to know how to do, so many features. If the computer can predict what you're going to do, the next instruction set that it needs, it can perform better. It's like frame generation for graphics cards now where they're starting to get better and better at trying to predict the next frame. That way they can generate more frames faster. That's what's making GPUs really, really good these days. And that is the next big step in improving PC performance. It just so happens that if you have a reduced and simplified and streamlined instruction set, well, it makes instruction set prediction a lot easier, a lot simpler of a process. And that means that when things are developed for RISC-V, they have a very, very high ceiling for performance capability. So what does this mean? Does this mean that you should go out and get rid of your current mainboard and upgrade, or you need to buy a framework with a RISC-V dev mainboard in it? No, 
it doesn't. But what it does mean is that Risk V is coming. It's something that's been in the works for a long time. Something people have been talking about for years. Many, many very highly intelligent people in this industry who have been predicting for a long time what's coming next have been right plenty of times or saying Risk Five is the future. Me personally, I think it's somewhere between Risk Five and ARM, but I hope that it's Risk Five because I would love to see an open source future for computing. Either way, this dev board coming to the public for framework likely means that down the road there will be a, well, a much bigger, more powerful Risk Five framework board coming. Or at least that's what I hope. But that's not all the news, there's actually more. See, this whole chassis right here, this big metal thing that the laptop is assembled in, a framework actually open sourced the CAD for these on the Framework 13. This means you can make your own shells, skin cases, and so on. But you could literally take everything out of this and 3D print your own Framework case using their files. I think that's pretty cool. And Framework also launched what they call a factory second systems. This is basically like a B-stock unit or very similar to it. The big benefit I see here is that they're really cheap to get into the framework ecosystem because a framework computer, if you're looking at just price to performance, is not the cheapest thing in the market. It's not the best ratio either of price to performance on the market, but what it is is a fully customizable computer that you can make last for a long time. And while the initial purchase price is a little bit higher, once you factor in all the upgrades that you're doing over the years, say in three to five years, you upgrade your processor or something else, then you're just upgrading those components instead of having to buy a whole new computer. That's when it starts to actually save money. Same thing when other things fail like ports or your battery or your screen, trackpad, keyboard, you can just replace any of that. It's not a computer that you buy to throw away in a few years. And as a result, you get something that costs a little bit more, but is made to last for basically an indefinite amount of time. It's the laptop of Theseus. And their factory second system is actually a really good deal just to get like the main board, the laptop chassis, the screen, the keyboard, all that. You still have to bring things like your own RAM, storage, Wi-Fi card, expansion cards, and an operating system. But honestly, getting into the framework ecosystem, that makes it a lot more price competitive. Especially if you're someone like me who likes to tinker and is willing to build your own laptop because that's what I did with this one. I just ordered the DIY kit, a few extra parts, and put it together myself on my kitchen table. And within about 30 minutes, I had a working computer that I have one sticker on now and I'm going to have many more in the coming days. I've been using this for a few months. I am going to do a video on my framework machine. This is the Framework 13 with the AMD 7840U, which is actually a really, really capable chip in terms of onboard graphics but also in terms of power efficiency. I have really gotten great battery out of this, but it's not perfect. There's some things I don't like and some things that I've tweaked and changed from this laptop's factory setup. So if you want to see that video, make sure you stick around and subscribe because I think it's gonna be a fun one. I think that's gonna wrap this one up. If you like this video, leave a like down below. Comment, let me know what you want to see in the future. If you wanna get active in the community, you can hit the Discord or the forum, both available at the link in the video description. If you wanna support the channel, you can check out my float plane exclusive videos down the link in the video description too. There's some fun stuff in there. So always don't forget to stick around and subscribe for more videos like this. Till next one, guys. Peace.